All right, it's the Coda Noob coming at you with Coda and Jackson. We're recording a video, buddy. You gotta say hi. <laughs> and we just got home. I don't know if you saw the video before this one, but we were on the way home. On, on the way home. Thank you. And uh, project is already open. As you can see here, stop pushing the buttons. Um, brand new Unity project, nothing is in there yet. I did already make the demo script, but however, it is completely empty. And what I did here is I just brought the console window up because most of what we're doing, uh, we're just gonna log it out. There's not gonna be any UI or anything involved. This video is strictly about the Fibonacci sequence, how to tell when a number is within that sequence, how to print out the sequence up to a certain number, how to um, do um, recursion uh, recursion method with the uh, Fibonacci, and also I think there was something else. Maybe not, that's it. I think there really is something else, but we'll figure that out during the video. For now, that's the three things that I believe we're gonna cover. Do you mind if I use the mouse? All right, stay tuned and let's begin. Gosh, why does your feet smell so bad? I want to put sand on your feet. I send you to daycare, not to the beach. The Fibonacci model is very important. Many of your, if you're doing interviews or anything like that, that's one of the top things that they kind of almost always ask you. So it's important to see how you can um, code that. And it's really, really, um, easy it's just an algorithm it's pretty easy um, first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna create um, a sequence here an algorithm that's able to print out the full uh, oh, the cameras up there <laughs> to print out the full <laughs> Fibonacci uh, sequence up to the certain number that you want right so we'll create a function that will do so um, I'm just gonna say void um, Let's call it print fib. And print fib is going to take a integer. So we're going to say how long up to what number we want to print it. You good? Up to what number and we'll just send a number when we call it. Um, so uh, first things first is uh, we're going to need a um, variable integer. We're going to need three. So you have a, b, and C, right? Um, A should be zero. B will be one. And C will also be um, zero. So with that alone, we'll start off with our for loop. So we just want to create a for loop for um, and I, I'm sorry, I, and we, we just set I to 1, and then as long as um, I is less than the value we're going to pass in, so the X from here that we're passing in, then we simply increase I by 1, right? Now, this is where you would simply just um, print a value of C. So what's going to happen here is we tell C that C needs to equal A plus B. Sorry, B, just like that. And then right after we print C, um, now A needs to equal B and B needs to equal C. And that's really it. That's the logic behind it. Let's go ahead and, and just call it. So right here, it's, it's print fib. And we'll tell it to print up to um, the 30th, um, the 30th uh, index. And with that saved, we go back to Unity camera. So let's just go ahead and run and see what happens here. 
And as you can see, it, it did it correctly. One, um, there should be another one, and then two, and then two plus one, three, three plus two, five, five plus three, eight, eight plus five. Um, the only thing we're missing is that when this starts up, you would normally print the initial um, A and, uh, sorry be a little space I'm oh, sure let's, let's do them one by one you normally print the initial a and the initial B results to start off with and now it works like a charm what are you doing um, next I'm gonna show you guys how you can tell if a number is within the Fibonacci sequence, right? So just like I passed this 30, we'll be checking not the 30th index, but we'll be checking if 30 is within this Fibonacci sequence. All right, so the next, the way to tell, an easy way to tell is to use a perfect square, right? The thing about it is that, and I'll show, I'll show it to you, a private, um, function, method, whatever you want to call it, and it will be a boolean, and let's say it is perfect square. That's what we'll call it. It's going to return a value, and also we're going to send it a value. So int x, as you can see, I love using int x. Um, and if you've never done this before where you use a return value and also a parameter to send a value. Um, it's very common. You don't, if you haven't used it, you should be. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new integer in here and we'll just call it S for, you know, a perfect square and say equal int and this is where we're just going to convert it, get the mathf square root of x. So right now I've stored the square root of the value I've sent into x. And we're going to return return s if s is actually equal to okay. I'm sorry, if s is times S, you see what I mean, equals X here. So we store the square root of the value we send represented by X and store it into S. Now if S, which is the square root of X times S actually equals up to the value we send, then you know it is a perfect square. But um, you can't just send any 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 value at all. We still have to manipulate the value right before we send it. I'm going to show you how we do that right now. So it's another. Um, I'm going to do another private boolean, and then we are done. Is feeble not c? So this is how we check to see if it's a Fibonacci. And as you guessed, it's going to take a value again. You know what? Let me just use n. I've been using a lot of x. So n. Let's see if n is a Fibonacci. And it's really simple, a code that you do here. You're just going to return n. But n, you do have to make um, some. There is some. There's another algorithm where it's going to be five times your number you're sent. So five times n times n plus 4, or 5 times n, times n minus 4. Now I'll show you. you. Remember, this is the Boolean, and this is the Boolean, so we can return that. That's fine. We can return this. Um, we can return that, but that's really not what we're looking for. We need, we need to do a little bit more, just a little, a little bit more calculations, and we're almost done. So like I said before, we do need to get a 5 times n times 
n plus 4. So if this is true, it's a perfect square. Or, so we can do our double slash like that, copy this, paste it there, and just do a minus 4. And we're good. So in our, in our value here, we can simply go here to start. And if we want to check if a value is within the Fibonacci, we can just drop it in right there. For example, 8. We'll paste. Oh, I'm not really printing out any, um, any results here. So let me do a, uh, let me do an if. Now let's do that. So if this is, um, if this is true, else, right? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll just print is fib is not fib. Shark do 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 baby shark. All right, we'll stop and we'll play. So now we're checking if eight is or not. It says it is. If I change it from eight to 13, stop and hit play. This also says it is, but we do know that nine isn't, 10 isn't, so we'll go for 10 and we'll play. No, it says is not. We're done with all of those. Um, finally, I want to show you how you can use um, recursion within the Fibonacci to kind of send the index of where you want to find out if the value of that Fibonacci. So recursion is a form of having a function repeats itself. I'm gonna show you how that's done, right? So it's just one function you're, you're gonna make, um, and I'll just do a private, um, private integer, and I'm gonna say check, check fib, Let's check if it's Fibonacci number. Of course, it's also gonna take a value, and that's really it. And then all you got to do now is return. No, we're not going to just, we're not really just going to return the value. No. Um, what you would do is you would return the value by doing some calculation within the function itself. So return the x that they send minus 1 plus return the x that they send um, minus two. If that makes sense, then, um, cause every time you do this, you're recalling the function. Every time you do this, you're recalling the function. The function is recalling itself and this creates a, um, recursion. Um, recorded, I, I, I thought I was recording, um, but apparently, uh, <laughs> I did a lot and it was not recorded. So um, this right here is what you call recursion. You can see that it's just a return integer method that returns an integer and also sets one as well. Just like the previous variables, um, previous um, functions that we made here. And I'm not even sure if these was recorded so I'm gonna have to go through them again anyways. Um, recursion, right? So it returns a number, so we can return x that we send, but we're returning the function it's calling itself, and then the value minus 1, plus the function calls itself again, and the value minus 2.
That's why it's called recursion, because the function calls itself. Finally, we just print and call the function and send 5, which should spit out 3. I think it should spit out 3. What does 5 spit out? Actually, 5 spits out 5. Um, buddy, we don't need that. I believe if we type, um, let's type 10. And we got 55, which is correct, because 55 is the 10th value within the Fibonacci sequence. You can see here if we go a full max of only printing out the, the full 10 on the list. So we'll print those out right now when you see that it stops at 55. See, it stops at, well, it stops at 55, and we also printed out 55. I have a poop to change. I thank you guys for watching and enjoy. <laughs> thank you so much. Hopefully this helps someone out there. Hit the thumbs up so someone else can also see this video and um, learn something new just like you did today. All right. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button as well.